Colorado, home to some of the finest trout streams and rivers in the lower 48, and home to some of the best fly tires as well. In the next few minutes, we'll visit with these artists as they create their signature fly patterns. We'll also join them as they fish Rocky Mountain National Park, the Frying Pan, the South Platte, the Arkansas, and the Colorado. Fly tying is part craft and part magic. Binding bits of hair, fur, and feathers to a hook in an attempt to create something that will fool a trout requires a keen sense of observation. The best tires are also avid fishermen who have a thorough knowledge of the life cycle of all of the various things that trout eat and who have spent hours observing trout in their natural habitat. Each of the master tires profiled in this show have made great contributions to their craft as creators of flies that fool trout. Flies that are designed to deceive. Our big foam body dry fly works as both an imitation of the golden stone and a strike indicator for our nymph. We're gonna, we're gonna put a little gold ice nymph below this on a couple of feet of 5X tippet. We're, we're gonna fish it in a 16. The fish are eating the adult stone flies. They're also eating a uh, small gold yellow colored nymphs that are in the water. We've got yellow sallies, we've got PMDs. So in some of these deeper pockets we can we can nymph them without having to put on a full-blown nymph rig. So whenever we fish these hopper dropper type rigs, a lot of time the trailers, the nymph that we use, is uh, we try to approximate the size and color of the insects the, that are in the drift at that, that particular time. There's the gold ice, the, the little trailer, tied with some ice dub for the thorax holographic tinsel on the abdomen and just some ginger pin for the for the tail we do want to rib that holograph holographic flesh with some wire otherwise on a brown trout like that that's about a one fish fly that that wire made it a whole lot more durable then we've got just a standard stimulator profile here on the mama eight We're going to do the Papa Ape here. We start off with a 3X long, number 10. This is the the low rider, the the parachute version of the Striped Ape series. Uh, I use natural elk for this pattern. I like the the barring, the the little color variation. And a parachute post is going to be a, a foam cylinder, and I'm going to cut that on an angle and set the tip of that angle about a hook eye length behind the rear of the hook eye and capture that. Lash it down pretty good, and then I'm going to clip it about a hook gap in height, and then we'll treat it just the same as we would any parachute post. I'm going to use some thread behind it to help stand it up and then I want to build a thread base around the bottom of this down near the hook shank maybe a hook eye length up the post but that's to reinforce that post to wrap that hackle around Then we're going to take our laminated foam bevel it and taper it again 
and tie in that little tapered portion. That helps get a, a slight taper to this body. And as we wrap the foam, we'll adjust the color segments so we get that nice variegated effect and just wrap snug enough so that the edges smooth out. Don't want to leave edges but we also don't want to compress that foam and lose the floatability, lose the advantage of tying with a foam body. The easiest way I've found to put, put the wings on these parachute patterns like this is I'm going to bring that clump of of hair up on my side of the hook, get my measurement, which is going to be half the length of the tail, come in with my off hand, hold it in that position, slide the scissors even with the rear of the post, and clip those butts of that hair off. Then just nudge that wing over on top of the hook, capture it with a few soft wraps, and then tighten up and anchor it nice and solid. I let a few creep down the backside and get rid of those. Looks like I flared that hair a little more than I needed to. So I'm going to go just to the rear of those thread wraps with some softer loops and, and neaten that wing up a little bit. Use some of our peacock Midge cactus chenille for the thorax on this. Tie it in in front of that post, and I want to make a few wraps with that chenille in front of the post. What I'm doing there is just leveling out the thorax of that fly. Then we'll attach some, some legs on either side. We're going to wrap our chenille on the rear of that thorax, capture it and hold it in that position, and then attach our hackle. Tie in our hackle, prep it with the little stub on the, on the base. I'm going to tie that, capture that little clipped stub right in front of the post. I'm tying this hackle in with the shiny side up. Now we can complete the thorax. First wrap of hackle is going to spiral up the post away from the fly. Each succeeding wrap is going to nest underneath it, working back down toward the body. To finish this off, I'm going to bring that down between those legs in front. The thread is going to go over the hackle stem. I pull the hackle stem toward the rear of the fly my thread can go right out in front, across, and down. I've got that hackle feather locked now. Thread over the hackle, hackle toward the rear, thread out in front, across, and down. Clip the excess, and then I can lift back, build my thread head and whip finish and then just even up the legs.
take a look at the bottom of your parachute flies to make sure they're nice and flat on the bottom. If you've got a few hackle stems, hackle fibers that are extending below the body of the fly, clip those off. That way your parachute won't float on its side. A little drop of head cement right on those hackle wraps against the post and then some on the thread head also. Pop a nice low riding fly, good lead fly for a hopper dropper rig. Well, with all the foam and the hair and everything, uh, really floats well. And you, uh, as a guide, you get a lot of beginners that don't don't manage line real well. So consequently, the flies dragging a lot, and flies that are tied with stuff that absorbs water more tend to get waterlogged and sink a lot a lot sooner. This is pretty low maintenance for a guide fly. You don't have to continually dry it and redress it. There we go. Now we've got a handle. Picking up some weight. And Papa Ape right there in his mouth. <laughs> 